Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Well, it is uh, one hour and 34 minutes into the 30th day of October, and I do have to go fix my uh, shine clock, my cuckoo clock type of thing. I didn't wind it enough, and so it stopped, So I, and it stopped around 1.30, so uh, it's time to go do that again, so. Anyways, I did a, uh, I did a, went out for observation. I, I did uh, my work out there. We had a train come by again. It was, it's interesting trying to find out, to figure out from the sound, exact, you know, what's going on with the train or the trains. Sometimes there's more than one. And I couldn't stay out there long enough. And I came in around one o'clock in the morning, but I knew there was a. Oof. Another train waiting there. Because sometimes, depending on on the train and where it's, where it's waiting, you can smell the diesel fumes. You can smell the fumes from the train. Uh, that's how close it is in terms of the actual distance that you can actually smell the train uh, from where I'm sitting. Uh, you can also you can also smell when the rain, when you can tell what's in the rain by smell as well in terms of where it comes from. Uh, the uh, if it comes from uh, the Pacific Ocean, you can smell the salty air from there. You can smell the salt in it. Same thing if it's coming from the Atlantic. Sometimes that's what we had last last time of the uh, the system that uh, New York and uh, Boston had at the Cape. That's little left a lot of people without power. Uh, was over here. It was the same. It, it was so large. It was over where I am in Toronto, up uh, up in Markham, but also up in Markham, and it went all the way to uh, to the just about the tip of the Hudson's Bay. So it was a rather large system. It, of course, if you're sitting locally, you could sort of say, "Oh, yeah, this is." This is something that, uh, you know, the government's controlling the weather. They're, you believe in geoengineering and so on and so forth. And, of course, if you haven't had enough experience with uh, with uh, 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 observational a atmospheric physics, then you're not going to have this sort of sense. But, again, a lot of people don't. They don't have that experience. They don't have, and so they use their own sense, their own judgment from what they've seen, what they've read in articles and stuff like that. And then I don't t tend to poo-poo, you know. I know, and here's the thing, I'm trying to phrase things. This is why I'm tripping, tripping over my words here, in addition to the fatigue. Can't keep my eyes open. Uh, anyways, back to what I was saying. You don't want to crush a person's enthusiasm when they talk to you about very specific th things, science stuff, that they find in the newspaper. They, they know you're doing science, and they say, oh, Daniel, did you see this? And they're enthused about this. You don't want to crush them that some of that, that, that stuff is only only partially true, which in many, in many cases it is. Your science, oh, your science writers typically don't know enough to do. They can't convey the sense that a person is there on a daily basis. Uh, you you can't convey the experience. They can't relay the experience that you have that you've had. Uh, as I said, they'll talk about uh, occasional talk about the solar flares, but from perspective in terms of the atmosphere, uh, uh, in terms of solar astrophysics, uh, looking at the telescope almost on a daily basis, uh, you come to understand that these solar flares are there on a daily basis. It's not something unusual that they're always there. Uh, it's the coronal mass ejections that, from my perspective, are the, if you call it the show, and they occur two to three times a week. And these are the ones, these coronal mass ejections, you can sort of see that they knock out the satellite, the satellite blinks out, they, they actually have an impact on, on, on the um, on the satellite itself. But 
you have to find a tactful way of bringing the conversation forward, uh, just as you you know you would in any case where you're talking about something that you don't want to offend the person who's trying to be friendly or trying to bring forward something uh, interesting to talk about in terms of a conversation. So you do have that sense of well, well okay, I do have to be uh, more tactful with some of my approach to things. But the thing is, as a nerd, when, you, when you're socially awkward that becomes a difficult thing, and you always end up, in many cases, you always end up saying the wrong thing, and of course someone does get offended, someone does get hurt. And it's not that you intended to do this, it's just that this is, uh, the sense of reality, the sense of, of interconnection that you have at that particular point in time. You try to be aware of it, but the, but it, it, depending on how fatigued you are, but typically, I'm going to bed. I don't finish here. I don't finish all the different ends and ends, and the odds and ends, the different notes that I have to take, and different things I have to go through in terms of my checklist. I don't finish until six o'clock in the morning. So by that time, and I, if, if, if I'm up during the day, I have to be up during the day for a particular social event. Uh, yeah. My mind is going to function as if, as if I were up at midnight, or like for the average person who's sleeping, go talk to the person at three three in the morning after you've woken them up, and you'll see that the 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 behavior will be significantly different. There will be a lot of missing. There will be a lot of points in time in during the during your your, your social event where there is a lot of coherence missing in the person's uh, discussion. They don't necessarily connect, probably. But that's because it's 3 o'clock. For them, it's 3, three o'clock in the morning, but where I'm typically awake. But my 3 o'clock in the afternoon is many other people. Uh, my 3 o'clock in the afternoon is the other people's uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. As, it, you know, as I said, it depends on when you end up going to bed. I'm going to bed as people are coming in, so it's difficult to me me to sort of wake up and sort of deal with what the reality is uh, when it's, from my perspective, 3 o'clock in the morning. So, anyways, uh, I think that's going to be enough for now, and I'm going on to the Yali Vlogs. I don't really feel like eating right now, so I'm going to wait to have some cereal. That's my go-to when I'm not feeling like eating. And So that's kind of the way things go. Anyways, uh, I will see you in the next transition. Well, it is uh, 10 hours and 30 minutes. No, 10 hours and 12 minutes into the uh, 30th day. There's where it is. 10 hours, yeah, 10 hours and uh, 13 minutes into the 30th day of October uh, 2021. We're taking a pit stop. Uh, we had a we just we had a pit stop actually. Uh, we're just taking a pit stop from uh, from sleeping. Uh, the dreams seem to be going pretty well. Uh, they are in, in, in to say the least adventurous. You know you know when you're really fatigued and and you're too much of a workaholic if in, in some cases. When your dream vacation is your dream, <laughs> and in your dreams, a large chunk of your time that it's centered around you sleeping, <laughs> sleeping in sleep, well, dreaming, sleeping in uh, in your dreams. And this is kind of the way it is for me. Is that it's centered around well, particularly when my bed. And of course, the bed opens up into a number of different portals and. You go from uh, point to point to point to point without necessarily uh, moving anywhere. Uh, it's kind of like, a lot like uh, the Starship Enterprise. Uh, the warp engines uh, work in such a manner that, uh, that the ship doesn't go from point A to point B, but rather uh, space comes to it. In other words, uh, this is a bizarre contradiction that has been found in quantum mechanics. Uh, that space and time don't necessarily have to be linear. Li linear, what we call from point A to point B, you can actually pull 
And this was centered around black holes and uh, and in the super string theory, wormholes. Uh, that, that space can be brought to you. In other words, you don't have to move, but uh, uh, it comes to you, everything comes to you, even, even though we may perceive it as a motion, we call uh, astral projection. There is no actual astral, pro uh, astral projection in the sense that you are moving from point A to point B, but rather it's a perception of such. And so the dreams kind of reflect this, and this is sort of the way it works. But I, and I go to a number of different places. Of uh, I, uh, some of it I can describe and stuff. Uh, some of it I can't describe. It's just sort of uh, I don't know exactly where all these different places are because in some cases I've really never been to them before. Now, normally you're supposed to be able to, uh, your dreams around, or should be surrounding things that are familiar, that things that were places where you've been. But there's a large chunk of, of the dreams that are, are in places that were, I've never been. So, how this kind of works out is, is beyond me at this point. But again, again, this is what makes exploration, exploration. You're there to explore the different uh, aspects of the dream world, and uh, this is certainly the case. You know, so it's not, uh, for me, that significant of an issue. I know I've got my eyes closed because I'm tired, and I, I'm at a point where I can't keep my eyes open. So we'll see how things end up going tonight because I'm planning to spend doing another all-nighter uh, so I can go to church in the morning on Sunday morning. So... And we go early in the morning around, uh, typically around 8 o'clock we end up going. So I have to, I'm usually up by 7. Uh, so, uh, that'll be it for now. I'm going back to bed uh, till about uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, the next portion of my day begins. So I'm going back to the other realm, the other world, the, the dream world, and, and seeing what I can sort of figure out there. You know, see how the uh, exploration goes. Well, uh, three hours later is what I would have said if I had vlogged uh, when I first got up around uh, uh, 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I've been uh, needing a little extra sleep this uh, today and, and yesterday, a couple hours ago. <laughs> uh, I ended up getting up for more, somewhat of a pit stop to go out to do some observation. Oh, I got, got up around five. I think it was around five. No, it was, it was later. It was around, it was around 7.30. Around 7.30. Um, uh, I was hungry, so, but I found a coupon. I was able to get a $35 coupon from uh, Uber Eats. So I decided to order out to do the uh, junk food run at McDonald's, and that's what I did. Uh, not bad. I was pretty happy with it in terms of the price. And I said, junk food. My junk food is uh, the Big Mac and so, and large fries. That's my junk food. I sort of figured out how to sort of uh, enjoy it better by uh, putting it in the oven and keeping it warm. Apparently, they're not using um, um, heated bags to keep the food warm. Oh, but then after I ate, uh, I began feeling tired again. I was around, I finished, I finished eating around uh, nine thirty. Then, but by, by uh, ten o'clock, half hour later, uh, instead of going outside, I was just too groggy. Just wasn't walking properly. When I get tired, uh, I don't walk properly. I don't. Uh, it's, it's a fatigue to the point where you're kind of, it looks like you're drunk. It'd be, in, in some cases, in terms of the way I speak, uh, and I slur my words, and I don't pronounce things properly, uh, it's like being drunk. It's like being intoxicated, because you sim you don't function uh, the way you should uh, if you were actually... Um, uh, oh. Having a proper body function in terms of uh, mental alert, being mentally alert, being being 
uh, capable of properly speaking and, 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 and sort of not uh, wobbling around. But <laughs> uh, that's kind of the way things go for me. It's just I don't sleep that much, so uh, I need sometimes I need extra sleep uh, to deal with some of the fatigue that I have. Um, so I went to bed around, back to bed, I transitioned back to bed again. Uh, continued on with my dreams. The dreams are, are, are still quite unusual. I, I, I don't think I've ever had a usual dream. I'm more used to them, but more, uh, I've become more comfortable with the dreams lately. Uh, but they're still rather bizarre. And I think they, they, they in many cases, reflect that, the sense that I don't, have any particular direction that I'm actually going in. Uh, I have an overall direction, but there's no uh, immediate fundament, fun, or, or called uh, specific direction. You kind of, uh, as things come to you, the, you take them as they as you, as they come, and there's always this ducking and weaving, and there's always uh, some degree of uh, adventure, if you will. And it keeps you uh, moving from point to point to point, you know, from transition to transition to transition. That's kind of the way it is. And even when I got up now, well, three hours ago, there are a number of things to do on my checklist that I sort of went through and got a whole bunch of more stuff done. So now I'm free and clear for the next uh, couple of hours. Uh, so I'll be going back to bed and uh, seeing what happens now. Was was that? I just had some cereal. Uh, uh, I think, you know, in, in, in terms of my standard food, I think I prefer cereal over everything everything else at this point. But then again, you know, my body is tired. It's, it, it, and it's, I feel like, well, it is. <laughs> it's 5 o'clock in the morning. It's, 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 for most people, they're, they're either just getting up or, you know, for, well, not on the weekends anyways. Uh, this is when some people be just getting up, but they're very groggy. At this point in time, because uh, the sleep is still with them, uh, so <laughs> this is kind of the state that I'm in, uh, so, so, so it's going to be a transition back to bed because I've got enough done that uh, I don't have to worry about anything until basically uh, Monday morning. I do have to do some uh, review work, some editing work on the vlogs, but. Uh, uh, oh, I didn't. I didn't end up filming uh, the uh, observation vlog last night, Nick Diesel, because I slept through everything. So I'll do that again tonight. I've got the topic li lined up. I just got to have to finish go through do, go through the uh, the vlog I just edited. I haven't uploaded it yet, but I have to go through it and listen to uh, what's being said, what I've said to review what I, what I did, uh, and this will help me. Uh, well, add a title to it and then uh, uh, film tonight's uh, um, observation vlog. So, anyways, uh, see you at the next uh, uh, transition point. We had a bit of work to do. <laughs> so, anyways. Um, I just finished my uh, talk for tonight, my uh, observational vlog. And it, 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 it's how the mechanism of understanding things work. So, but the thing is that before we went to, uh, it was my birthday over the weekend. My birthday is typically on Halloween. And so uh, my brother came over. We had some cake, uh, nice ice cream cake from Baskin and Robbins. Uh, then uh, we had some dinner. It was basically um, well, what I call my typical food, which is basically... Uh, Syrian uh, Pan-Asian food and I'm going to have that later on uh, probably tomorrow as well I have some left over uh, in something known as a paneer uh, we call it Syrian bread and it's, and it's, it's basically a, a, the Westerners call it um, a wrap but it's not necessarily a wrap <laughs> uh, oh, here comes the train looks like yeah, we are going to get a train for tonight in the, in, the, in the previous uh, segment, uh, we didn't get. Well, I thought we were going to get a train, but we didn't get a train. 
But uh, we're in the right time. We're just around 11 o'clock, and the train's coming through. I can hear the, the engine, and it's coming in from the Western Waveguide. No, it's hitting the Central Waveguide. So we're going to talk as this goes through because we got a storm. I'm out here watching a storm coming in. Another vortex is coming into Toronto, into, into that area. Uh, it's just centered on there right now. It came in from the southwest, so it brought a little It brought a little warm weather with it earlier. But now, as the wind picks up, it's, uh, it's, uh, the temperature is uh, dropping significantly. And, of course, as the wind goes, uh, you have a wind chill effect, and that, that sort of knocks everything out. Uh, anyway, I did my I did my um, my um, I edited one of the vlogs and I've been talking about Carly Carly Reese and I've been talking about Allie a lot, and so I guess this would be a message to them if they wanted to do this. It's hard. It's hard coming as if it's hard coming up with a conversation. It's hard fixing up a vlog. Oh boy, that wind is really picking up. It's not easy putting a vlog together, particularly getting content. And I have been content commenting, so I'll do this. I'll, I'll make this offer if they ever see this. My content is set because I don't. I'm not monetized. My content is set as Creative Commons. That means anyone can use the content that's in here. You can use a bit of it, all of it, whatever we want to do. I commented on them. It's only fair if they want to comment on me that use me for some form of comment to add content to their to their stuff. They could, they're more than welcome to do so. They don't have to give me credit for it. They don't have to, but it's whatever they want to do. If in order to help them out to produce more content, this is uh, what my my sort of my offer is to them. Because it is it's difficult coming up with content. It's difficult sort of uh, sitting out here night after night. Uh, uh, well. They're, they're doing day after day and not knowing what to put into in, into the vlog. I mean, I missed, missed uh, vlogging doing the observational vlog last night because I really didn't have enough notes uh, to put together uh, to order, in order to do, to do the essay because the observation vlog, this is a transition section. This is a transition section of a larger blog, vlog, larger vlog is uh, our, our life sorry, here it goes. our life as cyborg alpha so that's what that is that's, that's what this is I think the train there, there's a point at where, where, where the train stopped and wait for other trains to come through so I think that train that was coming in has stopped so I, I don't hear the I don't hear the engines anymore. And again, it's that pulse. It's the it's the pulse width that comes in, and the pulse with the, the the sound it's hearing in terms of the wave contains several other frequencies in it uh, of different components of what you in terms of what you hear of the sounds that come from the train. So in this case, what you're hearing primarily as the wave as the wave comes in and gets up to a peak, gets up to a higher volume. You're hearing the pistons of the engine, so so I know it's there, but just now it's kind of died off. I'm not hearing it the way I was hearing it, which probably means the train is now stopped. So, but I said, you know, vlogs are difficult to put together. It's not an easy thing to do to put a vlog together. Uh, you can see with a number of vloggers that they're tired. Uh, that they do their editing in order to keep it current uh, so that they, they, they do a large chunk of their editing right before they go to bed so that it's up for the next day and you know so the vlogger has the vlog audience has something to watch and it's difficult keeping the artist it's not everybody's cup of tea and you got to find a way to sort of bring your why don't bring the audience in and then afterwards keep the audience like right now Allie the rose has an audience in it what she has to do is she has to keep work to keep to keep the audience. Carly Reese has an audience, but now she's back in a situation because the way she's grown up, she's now a different person, not somewhat of a different person than she was 
and her vlogs are shifting. And so she needs to bring in the new crowd. She needs to, to rework her channel. And this is what a lot of channels do. A lot of channels do rework themselves. I mean, I, for, I remember growing up, there was this heavy rock channel, you know, um, 104.4 Chum FM, major thing. Oh, they, all the rock concerts were on there. These were the, the, the days where people are now wearing the T-shirts. They have the T-shirts of Metallica, Rolling Stones, and uh, Led Zeppelin. These are the popular T-shirts. Well, these are the bands that were playing back at the time that uh, uh, Chum FM, uh, 104.5 Chum FM was, was there. And they were a major, they were, they were a heavy rock band channel. They were, but as the audience grew older, they wanted to bring in another audience, they moved to dance music. And now they're basically top 40. <laughs> so this is kind of how things evolve. And the thing is, this is what channels have to do on YouTube. They have to realize that they have to evolve with the audience if you want to be trendy. Right? If you're doing trendy stuff, then you have to evolve with the audience. The second thing is, is that you can't expect YouTube to keep giving you money. You have to earn, you have to bring in sponsorships. The sponsorship is where you're going to get your money. To understand this, go back into history. Uh, you can do this on YouTube and look for uh, Lawrence Welk's Geritol Hour. Or you had the Colgate Theater. Well, Colgate and Geritol were products. And what, the, what these early TV channels would do in order to pay for whatever they're producing for that airtime, that company would, would sponsor that particular hour. In other words, they'd pay for it. Well, this is what a TV producer does. You have a producer of a show. What does the producer do? And, and Lionel's wife, uh, Lynn Shaw, is a producer. What do they do? They gather all the money. They give, gather all the resources to put a show together. So what happens is a YouTube channel, when you're putting out a vlog or whatever you're doing, you have to figure out a way how to get all this job, done, all this work done uh, for your channel. And you got to understand it's going to be in bits and pieces. It's not going to be all at once. So it is a difficult thing. I understand that it is difficult. And so uh, because uh, I think I'm driving, I might derive some benefit from them. Uh, they can get some benefit from me as well. And uh, we have a YouTube community where we're, we're all YouTubers and we can comment and talk about each other's channel. With mine as creative content, uh, they can take clips and this and that and edit together a, uh, a nice uh, vlog that they can sort of make some money with. Anyways, I think that's it for now. Uh, I'm going to sit out, wait for the train to come by. I'm going to pack everything up now here. So it's not going to be on the, uh, it's not going to be in the discussion at all. So I might pull a clip from someplace, someplace else, but I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, uh, see you inside. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life.